Hi, I'm Alex and uh, welcome to my studio. Oh wait, stop, no listen. Except it's not a studio, is it? This is my conservatory. And it's only in use because we were renovating the house and this is the only space I've got. But I guess you're in the same boat as well, right? You may have somewhere to work, a garage, a tiny corner of your home, whatever it may be, but you don't have a dedicated shop either. And I guess that's what the purpose of this video is all about. So in this video, we're going to talk about what tools you really, really need to get started in woodworking. And I guess that depends on, you know, whether you want to do some DIY around the house, uh, whether you want to make stuff to sell for like a little side hustle, or if you just want to make it because you enjoy making things and it's fun, or you want to give things as gifts to family. And those are all great reasons to start, along with lots of other reasons that I probably couldn't name off the top of my head. But first I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and, and how I got into this. Um, so if that's not your cup of tea, you just want to hear the recommendations for the tools, then I will try and put a timestamp right here on the video. Or if I can't work out how to do that, I'll put one in the description below, so just go ahead and click there. But for those of you that have stayed, so I bought the house you can see behind me, or maybe see behind me through this window, uh, two years ago with my then girlfriend, now fiance. And um, like everywhere in the world, housing is expensive. Um, and when I say this place wasn't livable, I mean, it was not livable. Uh, we had to rewire, refloor, replaster, repaint, retile, get a new bathroom. Completely undoable. And as two young working professionals, that's expensive. Uh, so I endeavoured to do as much as I could by myself to save some money. Um, but tools are expensive. But I grafted away, I learned a lot, I had no real experience with DIY beforehand, and now we have a lovely home that we live in. But something worse had happened. I found that I loved building stuff. So I went to where everyone goes, where you are right now, YouTube. Uh, and I was really dismayed when I started Googling projects I wanted to do, or YouTube projects I wanted to do, and see that everybody had these thousands of pounds of tools. Um, and I just don't. I don't have that money, and I don't have those tools. I couldn't afford it, right? And then I realized, why not just buy some cheap ones and, and get started and see what happens anyway? And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what we're going to talk through today. Um, now, a lot of people talk about the buy once, cry once, or buy cheap, buy twice approach. And yes, if you are a professional furniture maker, that makes sense. Why would you pay for a cheap thing when you're going to have to buy it again later? So you may as well cry once. But if you don't know if this is for you, you don't know if you want those tools. You don't know if you want a Fez tool domino. So for me, personally, I endeavor to buy cheap tools. And the ones that I wear out or overuse, I know they're products I'm going to want in the future. And that's when I spend to upgrade my money. To upgrade my money? Wrong. To upgrade my tools and spend my money. But let's get into it. So realistically, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions about you. First, you've got somewhere you can work. As we've already discussed, it could be anything. And something to work on. I mean, this isn't even a workbench. It's an old dining room table with plywood top screwed on top of it. So I'm going to have to deal with that later and build a new one. But that's, that's for much later on. Secondly, I'm going to assume you've got some way of holding your work. So clamps and stuff like that, or a plane, or some weight, whatever. And thirdly, I'm going to assume you've got glue, right? Along with the basics like a ruler and a pencil, but I'll cover those anyway. Okay, so there are four categories I think come into starting in woodworking. And that is measuring and marking your work, preparing and dimensioning your lumber, or timber, or wood, or whatever you want to call it, shaping and cutting, and then finally, finishing. Now, let's break all those down in a little bit more detail. So we're zoomed in, and we're on to category one, marking and measuring. You do not need much for this, okay? This is probably maybe 15 pounds or 30 dollars worth of equipment if you're buying expensive things, okay? First things you're gonna need, a pencil. I'm not gonna explain why you need it, I think that's pretty evident. Alongside a pencil, I'd recommend a knife of some kind. You can get fancy, expensive marking knives. This is a Stanley. It was three pounds, I believe, from my local uh, sort of hardware store. Uh, but you can get it as cheap or as expensive as you want. It's just a method of cutting the work to help guide a saw later down the line. Moving on from there then, again, something really self-explanatory, a tape measure. If you don't know why you need one of these, have a think about it and get back to me. Steel rule, 
same as the tape measure. Uh, it's for measuring, it's for a straight edge. It's a very practical tool uh, and it's got a lot of utility but it doesn't need much explaining. Then the two things you will need are some form of squares. Okay, so this is a speed square, um, often used by joiners on building sites, and this is a combination square. If I had to pick out the two, I would take this one. Uh, you can use it to check if your work is square and level and other such things, but it gives you that perfect 90 degree angle. Um, and this is really great if you're gonna use power tools because you can hold it, and it's a quick and simple guide or straight edge for you to run along. That was super easy, right? On to category two. Okay, category number two, preparing and dimensioning. So you've marked up your stuff, but it's rough sawn wood or it's the wrong shape. You've got to cut it to an appropriate size so you can begin your work on it, or maybe give it a smoother surface or flatten it. Well, all you need for that is a saw. Any kind of saw will do. You'll hear about your distance and your dazukis and your Japanese pull saws and all this crazy stuff. A saw that can cut wood will do. This is a beat up uh, Ryoba Japanese pull saw. It was super cheap. It's not the best, but it gets the job done for rough shaping before I move on to my main projects. Of course, for the slightly more detailed work, you have things like your tenon saw, again, another cheap one from a local hardware store, or a dazuki if you're more into your Japanese style saws. Both good tools, both inexpensive, both get the job done. Then we're on to the thing you're gonna hear a lot about from any woodworker, especially hand tool woodworkers, the hand plane. This is the jack of all trades, uh, it will flatten, it will smooth, it will chamfer, it will shape, it will do what you need it to do. This is a vintage Stanley number no. 4, I got it for £25 off of eBay um, and it came and it, I must say they are a lot better than the modern ones but I didn't start with this. I started with this £20 cheapy boy, it's a Draper Expert that I bought from Amazon. Is it the best? No. Will it perform as well as other ones? Also no. Did it allow me to start building things? Yes. And I will put a link below to where I got this on Amazon in case you guys are inclined to get one yourselves. It will do the job if you want one out of the box that will just cut stuff to begin with. Okay, on to category number three, shaping your work. This is what I would call sort of the main part of woodworking. It's the bit we like. It's where you get to put your artistic influence onto the product you're making, whatever it may be. But it still doesn't need an exhaustive tool set. First off, you're going to need to hit things, whether that's a chisel or whether to knock some wood into place, so you need a mallet. This is a super cheap uh, £10 English sterling one. I don't like it, I'm not a fan of it at all. It is, however, the classic joiner style mallet, but I'm going to be making one of these soon and I'm hoping to make it a lot better. But again, it will do the trick for now. Then, following the theme of this video, this is a £12, so $15, spoke shave. It's modelled after the Stanley, I can't remember the number, but again, it's not the best, but this is a workhorse. It shapes, it rounds, it chamfers, it's fantastic. It's so good for adding your own unique flair to your work. And even though mine is cheap and tacky and I want a better one, it gets the job done. And then of course, no collection would be complete without a set of woodworking chisels. Now what I wanna, do wanna say is these Narex chisels here, I've never used them yet. These were a gift for my recent birthday from my partner. Um, but the set I started out with were a 12 pounds, so again, $15 set from Screwfix, which is a local hardware store here in the UK. They did me just fine for over a year. However, I now have these and I'm very excited to use them, but a cheap set will do just the same job. No need to be picky, as long as you've sort of got, I would say, uh, from six mil to about 25 mil, so a six, a 12, an 18, and 25. Uh, for you for you guys over the pond, I think that's probably sort of up to a one inch, including a three quarter inch, a half inch, and maybe a quarter inch chisel as well. But just four or five chisels is enough to get the majority of the work you're gonna wanna do done. And then our final category, finishing. Now, this is where people's random orbital sanders and drum sanders and card scrapers come in. That's fine, as long as you've got a smooth surface and you are ready to apply finish, that's where you are. Now, there are tons of finishes out there, from varnishes to oils to waxes to stains, okay? They're great, and please do go watch some other YouTubers with some excellent videos on what they are and how to use them. But for a one-purpose-fits-all, if I was gonna buy anything to start me off, it would be this, a pot of Danish oil. It's a great piece of, piece of finish. It gives a nice sort of 
warm feeling to the wood uh, and it's a mold protectant as well. It's great, it's one size fits all and it's perfect for your first few projects. So why am I doing this? Well, like I outlined how I got into it already, the honest truth is I want to prove that you can make nice stuff with cheap kit and not much experience or tools and you can sell it and you can grow a business. So who knows? Maybe you're watching this five years from now and I am one of those guys with a massive shop and loads of tools and that's great because it means you can do it from here. Or maybe you're following me from right now and we're gonna do this together. How am I gonna do it? Well, through social media of course, but obviously I've got my board behind me. Now, we've already gone through the basic tools I own and I'm gonna use throughout this video series. But here I've got a little wish list of tools that I'm gonna try and uh, acquire. Some I'm gonna build and we're gonna build those soon and some I'm gonna hopefully make the money to buy later on. Uh, and then to the right, We've got some initial projects, so the first one being sort of a bar stall, your bird houses, a keepsakes box, cutting board, normal stuff. But I like doing things that are a little bit different. So we're going to be throwing a guitar in there and a longbow. I just lost my sign. Well that needs to be stuck on. And a longbow, as I was saying, because what grown man or woman or, or non-binary individual doesn't want to fire a longbow at stuff. That's super cool. Of course, I know these aren't everyone's perfect choice of tools and I know some people will disagree with me and that's fine too. Like I've said, woodworking is individualistic, it's about adding your own flair to stuff. But please, put a comment down below if you think there's something I've missed off or that you disagree with or that you would have to have in your kit if you were starting again from day one. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you did like what you see and want to follow on this journey, please subscribe. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok as well, Underground Studio. And I can't wait to see you there. Till next time, take it easy.